Welcome to the Bravo Papers, a safe space for all us Bravo fans who love to analyze, deconstruct, and talk about our favorite Bravo shows ad nauseum. So join me, Bravo and Botox, and we'll catch up on all the Bravo news and read way too much into our favorite shows and Bravo liberties. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bravo Papers here with your Vanderpump Rules after show recap, kind of. I'm Bravo and Botox. And the after show this week, just to give you a little preamble, it wasn't really an after show. Like it was, but there was it it just was not really like it, of course, was not related to the reunion at all because they did these before the reunion, right? So, you know, I've been kind of telling you that as we've been going through these. So I did watch it. There was not a lot in terms of information or, you know, juicy nuggets or anything like that. But, you know, there was a few things that I did take note of. So what I decided is, you know, that was the last episode of the season, the reunion, I didn't want to leave you all hanging without something because I know that reunion was like, whoa, and we've all got a lot of feelings and reactions and things like that. So what I do want to do is, you know, give you some overall thoughts, um, tell you about anything that I did think that was of note from the after show. But really, it was just them talking about like Jax and Kristen Doty and whether they've changed or not. Uh, Honestly, it was a lot of fluff. Um, And then the other thing that I thought was, okay, so since there wasn't a lot from the after show, I could give my thoughts from the reunion part three, but they also revealed a secrets revealed. (laughs) So they also, they also released a secrets revealed episode of Vanderpump Rules. So I did watch that today. And I'm going to give you some thoughts on that as well as some Vanderpump Rules news that has hit the internet as of late. And yeah, I think there, um, there's some interesting stuff there for sure. So let's just talk about the reunion overall. Let me give you my overall thoughts to start with. Um, so infuriating as usual, I would say that the thing that I thought was like, if I had to summarize it, this would be my overall summary. Okay. The producers and Sandoval played Lala Lala played Sheena. Brock followed along with his wife. And everyone else used their own brain as best they could, <laughs> which, which isn't always to a very high degree, but they tried. So, and the only, the, the thing that was the most shocking about it was that Lala came off worse than Tom Sandoval. And that is hard to do. That's actually a feat. And I have to say, you know, I guess it's some type of accomplishment. I mean, no, I'm being sarcastic, but it's just, I just can't believe that Lala, like I was thinking about this as a whole, right? So let's think about like last season and the way that Lala was when last season ended, the way she was at the last reunion, the way she's been on social media, all that kind of stuff. You know, she's been very much inserting herself into this. She was very much team Ariana. She was very anti Sandoval, calling him dangerous, all this other stuff. But the other thing is that some of the criticism she got last year is sort of what what is making me think more about this year. So let me explain. Some of the criticism she got last year was, this is not about you. You know, there was some of that. Like Lala and James are overtaking the reunion, the season 10 reunion. You know, can we hear from Ariana and other people a little bit more? Like that was a lot of it for the people that were annoyed with them. A lot of people were fine with it because a lot of people just wanted to see Tom Sandoval get cussed out. So people were fine with it. But, you know, on the other side of things, it it was kind of like you guys are making this all about you. And as much as I think none of us minded too much, because at the end of the day, they were on Ariana's side and she needed people that were going to, you know, rally around her and fight for her and yell for her and scream and cuss for her. But, you know, now here we are, season 11, and somehow I, I don't 
really know how. I guess I do if I sit and break it down. But somehow this Lala has become the center of the season in a way. Like, if you really think about it, like she's the center of the hate and the backlash. She's made she's getting more hate than Sandoval, which, again, like the fact that that is happening and I'm not going to blame the audience because it's her own fault. But that just shows like. It just she really makes things about herself. Right. And it just really kind of solidifies that she doesn't really have like she wasn't bringing anything on her own she latched on to a storyline that wasn't hers and latched onto it so hard that she made herself the villain in it right which just kind of proves the point that if you're looking for a paycheck which lala clearly is like she's not really doing the work on her own I mean, I guess you could argue that she is because she managed to integrate herself so deeply into somebody else's storyline and become the villain of it. So I guess there's that. But then on the other side of things, it's like, what are you doing? Right? Like, why is so much pressure on Ariana to make your money and earn your paycheck? Right? Like, it does kind of show like, and this is something Lala has done a lot through the years is that she does latch on to other people's storyline and she does she's always like oh I'm a dog in everyone's fight she kind of is but you know is she always on the right side maybe not sometimes she is sometimes she's not but at the end of the day it's like she's just kind of proving over and over again she hasn't really shared that much of herself in an authentic way right it's really the main group the main original group are the ones who've really brought it, right? That being, you know, Sheena, Ariana, all of them. I, I know Ariana came in season two, but still, Lala didn't come until season four. We'd already have had like three of the best outstanding seasons happen. And she came in and she was really, to me, a producer plant. She came in and she kind of like got in the mix, stirred up drama, added shock value here and there, but all her arguments, all her fights, all her storyline, they're for the most part revolving around the group and the group hating on her because she's not showing her real life, right? A lot of it was because of that. That was kind of like the main thing for a long time and her and James being kind of isolated because of that, right? So it's just like, it's a weird thing to have her be so high and mighty in terms of like storylines and things like that. Like, I almost want to say like this group, the originals in this group, especially like they're the ones who brought their messy, actual real shit. Then the show was already successful. And then you kind of rode the wave, right? And then you've just been getting involved with them. And then yes, she's had conflicts about her personal life, but it's mostly defending against you know, Katie, et cetera, for not sharing her shit, right? And again, and again, Ariana and Tom were the only ones who defended her a lot when it came to that stuff. But yeah, like that's pretty fucked up. And now she thinks that she has the right to say anything to Ariana about what she should and shouldn't do on camera and how much she shared over the years. What have you shared? Like she made this point at one part where she was like, and this to me was one of the most infuriating parts of the reunion. She says to Ariana, oh, they never shared anything until this happened. So until Scandaval went down. And then Katie was like, well, maybe there was just like nothing to give. And I was like, I kind of think that that was the case. Like, I think that Ariana and Tom had fights, like regular couple fights, right? Or maybe they had the type of relationship where they were just kind of like fading from each other or they weren't as close but like there wasn't like a particular blow up moment or something and I totally get Katie being frustrated with that because like Katie and Tom showed so much of their fighting but on the other side of things it's like I don't know was it anything like yes did she maybe hide some of their relationship arguments and fights or dysfunction yeah I think that they they probably did but at the end of the day, when something big and groundbreaking did happen, she did choose to share it. So 
So that's it. I don't know what else like I don't know what else you want. You can, I guess, have been mad at her for the last few years for not fighting with Sandoval more on camera, although they did have some fights on camera. They did fight about the cocktail bug. They did fight about when um, Brittany got cheated on by Jax and the way that Ariana handled it. Like they did have other little fights along the way. But I kind of think that that's the way that their relationship is. Like, I think they were the types that did sweep things under the rug a lot. I don't like they don't seem to me like the type that had blowouts that we were missing out on necessarily. I just really do. I think that that's what they were. Right. So, yeah, when a blowout like the big blowout happened, she again, she did call production and she did share it. So I like I don't know what Lala's mad about. And here's the other thing. Lala didn't share anything about her relationship either until also the blowout happened. And she only shared that because she was forced to, in my opinion. And by forced to, I mean, he was seen with younger women in photos. So she could no longer play dumb. I honestly think, like, I think Lala was with Rand. She knew what Rand was all about. She probably knew he was cheating for a long time. And I think she was willing to ignore it and overlook it as long as the money and the gifts and the stuff kept coming in and the lifestyle, etc. I, th- I think so. I just do. You can disagree. And I think once it became public and she she knows like that doesn't, you know, look great for her. So she had to all of a sudden be like, you know, fuck this guy and go scorched earth on him. Right. And I think one of the reasons that she did was because he was in legal trouble. It's in the L.A. Times you know, he's going to be maybe getting arrested or there's going to be lawsuits and the money's going to dry up and, and, and. That's the real story. If that hadn't happened, right, and he hadn't been busted and they were going to still go forward with the type of lifestyle that they had and he was going to still have money and keep bringing it in and all that stuff and then maybe have some little, some women on the side or something, I think she would have just kept turning her head to it. And that's fine. If that's the agreement you have and you're cool with that, that's your choice. That's what you want to do. I think she was cheating on him, too. I mean, Faith so much has said it in an interview recently. So <laughs> like it's, I think that was kind of their thing. And I think some people are okay with that. But again, don't act like you were on this show for years showing your relationship with Rand and showing every fight and argument you had. And yes, I know there's the one where like they broke up and he took the Gucci slides back. But again, besides that, what else did you ever show? You denied the relationship for years. You pretended that you didn't know he was married or whatever and that you thought he was separated, which I still don't believe. You didn't talk about it. You didn't talk about maybe some of the issues or or all this stuff that you say about him, that he's a narcissist, he's controlling, he's this. None of that ever came up. It was Rand as a stand-up guy. Rand is this, Rand is that. And he, we only saw like a positive edit of him when he was on the show, which he was barely on it. And then again, it wasn't, you didn't talk about the realities of it until you couldn't deny it anymore because it was in the press. Like I just said, him with those two women at the hotel. So how is Ariana's situation different? Well, it is different, actually, because her and Tom met. They were there. We watched their relationship start on the show. We watched the whole thing. You know, we did see some fights between them. We did see disagreements between them. No, maybe they didn't show as much as they should have. Fine. And then when shit hit the fan, it was shared in a real way. So it was different. It's very different. Also, they are both full time cast members and always were. Here's the other thing that pisses me off about Lala. She tries to pretend like the audience should have, you know, the same reaction to her and Rand. Listen, Rand, number one, we could all tell he's a sleazy piece of shit. And number two, he wasn't a cast member. Like he came in as your husband and he was on the show like here and there. You know, you could call him like a friend of at the most. But besides that, like, he's not a cast member. We didn't follow your relationship. In fact, the start of your relationship, you just denied it. Like, and refused to talk about it. You wouldn't even say his name. We didn't even know his name for, like, the first couple years or three years or whatever it was. 
Like you were asked straight up at the reunion by Andy about it and you were like, we're not going to talk about it. Is, you know, I don't get to dictate things. So that drove me crazy. It's just like, and then when he was on the show, he's just like playing pickleball with Schwartz and just doing stupid shit and like pulling a prank or whatever. Like it was nothing serious. And then the other thing that pisses me off is then she's like, oh, but then Sandoval was forced down our throats. Lala, he was on the show before you. And I'm really annoyed right now because now here I am defending Sandoval, I guess, in a way. But you came on their show. I'm sorry. <laughs> like The show was like Kristen, Stassi, Katie, Ariana, Jax. Like that was the core group. You came on their show four seasons in. So don't like you can't say you as an Ariana shoved Sandoval down our throats. No, she didn't. If anything, he shoved Ariana down our throats, you could argue, because Ariana would have never been on the show if producers didn't clearly see that her and Tom were having something going on and they knew this could be a good, you know, drama with Kristen was coming. So, yeah, of course. So suddenly she started working at Sir because, you know, LVP orchestrated that, which fine. Whatever. But at the end of the day, like Tom Sandoval is one of the original cast members. If anything, Lala has been shoved down our throat, if we're going to be honest. She came on the show season four. I'm glad she came on the show. I've always loved her on this show. I, I don't like her as in like she's one of my favorites or I'm some big fan or anything. I just think her dynamics in the group worked well. We had some great scenes and fights and whatever with her over the years. You know, she brought in some much needed drama and spiced things up, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, she was brought on for a specific reason by production. She was not a natural part of this group like the rest of them were. The rest of them were a natural, real friend group. And if it wasn't for Vanderpump Rules, Lala would have never become friends with these people and things just wouldn't have shaken out the way that they did. It, that's just a fact. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, that just is. So, like, just for her to say that is so weird. Like, I'm like, people liked Tom Sandoval. Like, I know Lala never liked him. I didn't ever really like him, to be honest, because I thought he was so annoying. But at the end of the day, he, him and Tom were liked. I've said this before. There's a reason uh, LVP named the restaurant Tom Tom because they did have, like, a brand and people liked them. Right? Like, he, it's not like he, it, he's like this guy who was on the show for all these years and everyone hated him and he's being shoved down our throats. Like, no, he was just a regular cast member. So I don't know what the fuck Lala is on and what she thinks, you know, her perception of things is just so distorted. This whole reunion, I just, I can't. Anyways, so I actually think though too, you know, Producers did play her a little bit. And again, I'm not saying this as an excuse for her or to take away any responsibility on her part. But it is clear to me that, like, it's just clear as day that they told her and they they thought they had something and it didn't go right. But they clearly told Lala, like, listen, we already see people online turning on Ariana, which they were about not moving it about the house, about thinking she's God, about this, about that, the other. So they're like, okay, we already see that happening. This is going to be the like, we need to restore the original group. We need to give Tom somewhat of a redemption so that the show can keep going. And we need to get the audience to, you know, we need to give Ariana a certain edit, right? Or we need to like try to get people to be a little bit more forgiving of Tom. And the way to do that is to make Ariana look bad. And Lala played into that. She believed it. She went along with it. And that was still her decision. Okay. Right. And then Lala is obviously a stronger personality than Sheena. And it's easy to play Sheena because Sheena was jealous, right? Sheena was just jealous in like the regular friend jealous way. I don't think Sheena had the same like stress and concern over like, you know, keeping the show going and producing a good season. Like, I think Sheena was just legitimately just jealous of, like, the opportunities that Ariana was getting and also just secretly still wanted to be friends with Sandoval. And that was easy for Lala to play on. Like, Lala and the producers, right? 
And Sheena does just kind of seem like she's the weaker one. And Lala just seems like a toxic friend. Like Sheena's a toxic friend too in another way. I guess I just feel like Lala's way is more deliberate and manipulative. And Sheena's is more just like, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I don't want to sound mean, but she's just not maybe the brightest. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Like, I'm not saying she's dumb. I don't think that Sheena's dumb. I really don't. But I don't think she's, like, the smartest in the group or the most, like, self-assured. I think she's got a lot of insecurities. She's She is self-involved, but in a more vapid way. And she's kind of easy to to manipulate. And I think that was done, right? And then Brock is just going to follow whatever his wife says. She's been doing this. This is how they're making money, you know. And everyone else was just doing it like they always have. Sandoval was doing his usual blame women. I'm, woe is me. Schwartz was doing his usual, like, be a pushover for Sandoval. Like, everybody else, Katie was doing her usual, like, ugh, I hate everyone, right? So it was just like the usual, everyone else just did what they usually do, which is what we want. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, and it's just seemed like Lala was not being fully authentic to how she felt. Like, OK, so she was being authentic to what she felt in terms of like her fears about the future of the show, which is a paycheck for her. But she wasn't being authentic to herself in the sense of like what she felt about the actual situation. You know what I mean? About like Ariana and Tom, like clearly uh, like Lala has always and does understand where Ariana's coming from with setting boundaries and stuff like that. That stuff I really think Lala just said because she just wanted to villainize Ariana. The reason I think she wanted to villainize Ariana is because one, she believed it would make a good show. But two, I think the, the actual other authentic feeling that she played on that she's not willing to admit to and still hasn't is jealousy. Like she's jealous of the opportunities. She's jealous that we didn't rally around her the way that the audience rallied around Ariana, right? All of that is what really has bothered her. So, you know, that's why she was willing to kind of like shift her opinions to help the producers villainize Ariana, like shift her opinions on like when Ariana should leave the house and, you know, you know, whether she thinks she's God and all this stuff. Like, I don't think like I think Lala probably knows on some level that a lot of that is BS, but she was playing it up. But again, I'm not saying that, like, I do think that Lala's jealousy is real. The jealousy is real. There's no doubt about that. 100%. The jealousy is real. The fear of the show not going and whatever, that's also real. Like, if you watch the end, it seems like a lot of it, too. Like, Lala is under this impression that life is fair, which it's not. And my biggest issue, or one of the things I thought was the most interesting was the last like four or five minutes of the reunion. So we have them all kind of like walking out and packing up, etc. And, you know, you have Ariana kind of reassuring Katie that she's authentic. Because again, like they don't know at the time, like how the audience is going to receive this and what people are going to say. Right. And I just wanted to be like, you do not even need to reassure Katie that she's authentic. Like we all know that. And, and then you see Lala and she's like really upset. She's mostly upset about Lisa. So Lisa Vanderpump gave that moment of reassurance to Ariana that I think, I think Ariana wasn't expecting it. I don't think any of us were expecting it, including me. Like this is where she was, You like where LVP was like, you can't say that Ariana hasn't shown up. Like she's shown up. And that's what the audience, that's what we were trying to communicate the whole time. She did the conversation. She has shown up for everything. Like what the fuck? So this is where LVP was kind of like, well, you know, if it was me and it was my husband and mistress, no, I wouldn't have. Right. And I think Lala was like, oh, damn. And Ari you could tell Ariana was touched by it. Like you could tell Ariana was moved. Like she almost starts crying again. You know, her face kind of scrunches up when LVP says that because I don't think that she was expecting it. And I think it meant a lot to her to have LVP say like, yeah, she's d still done her job because she has. This is not a subjective thing, right? It is not an opinion about whether Ariana has shown up or not. She objectively has. She has shown up to filming. 
She's done the scenes. She did the final big blowout scene with Sandoval. She did it last season when they picked up cameras again. She still shot group scenes with him this year. That's it. I don't, what else, what else? She came to the reunion. I don't know what else she's supposed to do. She's not abandoning her job. She's not not fulfilling anything. That's why it's just all so bonkers. And then you can say like, oh, Lala's like, well, I had to be questioned and da-da-da. I'm like, Ariana had to be questioned too. The problem is not that you, that Ariana didn't get questioned. The problem is that you don't like the actual questions. Like, you don't like that Ariana's questions were about how she was hurt and heartbroken and a victim. And your questions were more like, well, you kind of knew, right? Like the stuff like that, which I can see why she's hurt by that. Like she wanted people to rally. You know, she feels she was a victim of Rand, which like to a point she was, but to another point she wasn't. And here's the other thing that I need Lala to understand is we were all tricked by Sandoval too. We were not tricked by Rand. We all knew what Rand was from day one. He literally took the Range Rover from another woman to give it to you and then cheated on you with other women just like he cheated on his other woman with you. Like it was just, it was just such an obvious like sugar daddy, sugar baby type of situation that it, it's hard for people to like have that sympathy. It was also the way that she acted towards his ex-wife. Like she was terrible to his ex. Like there's things that she put out on social media that she said that she deleted later and all that kind of stuff. Like she wasn't like, like, it, like I know they're close now, but it's going to be hard for the audience to have a lot of sympathy for that. And on top of that, like Rand, we had no attachment to Rand at all. Like Ran was not like a TV character or like a guy that we watched for 10 years that we thought was like a good boyfriend or had changed since when he was the show started 10 years ago. Like a lot of people really felt that. And Tom Sandoval was one of people's like favorite guys on the show. And he was for a, even if you're like not me listening right now, trust me for a lot of the audience he was. And he had a lot of us fooled. So people felt betrayed. Like they felt betrayed as well. It wasn't just about empathy for Ariana. It was like the audience's betrayal. A lot of people also thought, definitely not me, but a lot of people also thought that Rachel was like this nice, innocent, good girl. <laughs> like so many people thought that. So people felt betrayed by her too. It was like this double layer of betrayal. Like we don't know these random girls that Rand had sex with. And again, this storyline did not happen on the show. The storyline with Ariana and Tom and Rachel, it happened on the show. We, this was like a, in terms of reality TV, this was like a history making thing. How many, like, give me a season of reality TV where you get to watch the two people having an affair play in the face of the woman that they're having an affair on. And it is all happening on camera. And we know what's going on behind the scenes. And no one else on the show knows about it. It's like the dramatic irony that we're watching. It's just so crazy to see. It's a once in a lifetime thing. Have, has there been affairs and cheating on other reality shows and situations? Yes, but it's like, it's not like it was happening in real time. And we watched this affair unfold. And we watched Sandoval and Rachel trick everyone and truly think that they were not ever going to get caught. That's why it was so crazy watching it. Like, especially when, you know, we found out the season was only like two or three episodes in, and then we found out, and then we got to watch the whole rest of the season with new fresh eyes. Like, I just feel like Lala is smart enough to understand all of that. It's like she's just choosing not to because she feels so sorry for herself because... She just didn't get all these opportunities and she didn't get to be like loved by the audience. That's really it. Like she's really she's really mad at herself or that's at least who she should be mad at. She, you know, she went with a guy who she clearly doesn't think is attractive because all she does is talk about how he's unattractive now. She went with a guy. She got played. He... You know, she she didn't even get to get down the aisle and marry him because partly because of COVID. 
Um, but also because the cheating got unfolded and then she wasn't going to marry him once the whole world knew that he was for sure cheating. Even though we, of course, like knew that was going to happen eventually. So, you know, yes, they had a baby together. So there's that. But on the other side, she didn't get any money out of it. She didn't get any property out of it. She didn't get any fame or extra anything out of it. She didn't even get her book on the bestseller list. The fact that she even like wrote a memoir already is weird to me, all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, and then she has to watch it all happen for someone else. Sorry. Again, life is not fair. Right. And actually, it is kind of fair in this case. Because your situations are just not the same. I could talk for five hours about why the situations are not the same. Okay. The other thing is that, like, I really, like, Lala really believed, and a lot of them did, that we would change our opinions when sh- once we saw all this fourth wall breaking. Um, we didn't. A lot of people have been posting online, like, the flashback to Watch What Happens Live, where Lala was on it saying, like, oh, we're all going to understand, and, you know, she stands by it, and... And then there was that whole thing with Andy saying Lala was the voice of reason that people couldn't wrap their heads around. Well, that was why, because they really thought that we were going to see it and be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Right. See, this is what happens when, you know, you don't know what, like, you don't know how to critically think enough. (laughs) Like, seriously, this is what happens. You get fumbles like this, right? That's why I think it's better for any reality star to just be your authentic self, do what you think in the moment and what you actually believe instead of trying to like play it. Right. And like they keep talking about how like, oh, some of the audience wouldn't or some of the cast won't say what they really think because they're afraid of the audience backlash. They're afraid of going against Ariana. Okay, well. You don't know. This has taught people, I think, that you just don't know what's going to happen and how the audience will react, right? Because they really believed people were going to turn and they didn't. So that's it. You might as well give your true opinion. You might as well, you know, if you hate Sandoval, just hate him. You know, you might as well have just said what you really thought. You know, maybe even not worry about the show, but just try to like, live those real situations, those real life situations, and do what you really think is right in them instead of doing like, okay, well, producers say that this is the way the audience is going to go. It's just not going to work. That's it. This is one of those cases, again, it's same as Rachel. You got to just take the loss. And no one can take the loss nowadays, honestly. It's become like a thing. You need to just accept that sometimes you made the wrong decision. You fucked up. And you got to just take the L, right? Sometimes like you don't have to try to victimize yourself. You don't have to try to like bad guy the other person. Like sometimes you can just say, I was dumb. I did something stupid or the choices that I made when I decided to, you know, sleep with Rand for a Range Rover that didn't pan out for me the the way I thought it was going to be. And it fucking sucks. And I'm pissed about it. It's okay to say that. Just saying. Okay. Okay, so there wasn't, I'm going to go over a little bit of Vanderpump Rules news. So there was an Alex Baskin interview. He is the executive producer of Vanderpump Rules, if you didn't know. Basically, something that he said has been making its way on the internet, which is that he says the Valley cast is packed and they will not be moving VPR people over there. Thank God for that, because it is packed. The cast is perfect. We don't need anyone from Vanderpump Rules on there. And on top of that, I know people are like, oh, this might be the end of Vanderpump Rules. No, the show is way too high of ratings, has way too high of ratings, sorry, for them to just cancel it. There's going to be another season. Okay, my prediction is that they're all going to come back. I even think Ariana is going to come back. And I do not think that the show is like over. It might not have 10 more seasons in it, but it's got a couple at least. Okay, and they're going to, you know, you're not going to get rid of the show that's bringing the most ad revenue and the most money. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to that. So, yeah, this show is going to keep going for a little bit while longer. And listen, they're probably hoping that maybe, you know, by the time Vanderpump Rules is done, we will have all forgotten and forgiven Lala and Sheena. And then maybe they can move over there. (laughs) Who knows, right? 
Um, so Brittany had Schwartz on her podcast as well. And she said her relationship with Jax right now is not great. And they can't even be in the same room for very long, which I'm not surprised about. Because just seeing that Jax has like this new girl that he's hanging out with or dating. Um, she was at like some party with him recently. I think it was... I think it was Ariana's brother's birthday, of all things. And then she makes like some dumb joke, yelling out that she's pregnant or something for attention. I don't know. She seems like a real winner. I mean, at least she's like in her 30s instead of being like 20. But anyways, I just think, yeah, I don't, I think a lot of people were like, oh, Britney's going to take him back. Da, da, da. I mean, that could still happen. But based on what I'm seeing on the Valley this season, I just hope she doesn't because it's just all kinds of fucked up. So Lala also, not to go back to Lala, but we do have to, has given her thoughts on season 11 on her podcast episode this week. So she's, you know, she waited till the last like five minutes of the podcast to talk about it. And I think this is kind of like her you know, final thoughts. So she said this was one of the most difficult seasons she's ever had to film, more so than the season when her dad passed away, which, I mean, that's a big statement. Um, I guess she's saying, like, I don't think she's saying it's harder than when her dad passed away. She's just saying that filming it was harder. Maybe she means the aftermath, I would think. She said she stopped talking about the season because she has to be honest she was seeing things on socials and then she starts crying. And yes, I do have to point out that she said she wasn't on socials and wasn't reading the comments, but clearly she is. But she saw things on socials that made her angry and made her resent the audience that she has loved and adored for so many years. So here is the beginning of the like walking things back, sucking up to the audience, etc. Okay. So she said it wasn't because the audience disagreed with her. I don't know about that, Lala. But it's because of the comments talking about her as a parent. So she says, you know, she doesn't show Ocean. She's very protective. Um, she says originally not having Ocean on the show was not her choice. So obviously it was Rand's choice because both parents have to sign off. But she says, you know, she was okay with it because she got to like hold that relationship close to her heart. But this season, you know, she saw people coming at her as a mom. And because of all these comments, it brought her into a dark space. And then she goes on about this for a while. She says, everything on the show is fair game, but her as a mother is off limits. Um, okay, so I, when I first saw this, I'm like, what is she talking about? Because I haven't really seen comments about her as a mother. Like what I've seen is comments about her using motherhood as a weapon in order to prove her points and make herself right. And there's been a lot of comments about that. And I still think that's a valid point. Like every time anyone, you know, has their own perspective on anything, she's jumping in with the like, well, you know, you don't have a kid and I have a kid to support and I need this paycheck because of this and da da da. And, and again, we all just see how that's, it's just not good reasoning, right? Like it doesn't matter. It's not Ariana's job to make money and make sure you get another paycheck to feed your child. That's, that's your job. It's no one else's job. The producers and the network can cancel the show whenever they want. They're not going to be like, well, we can't cancel it because Lala had a baby. No, that's, it doesn't work like that. Sorry. But the more I thought about it, I was like, maybe that's not what she's talking about. Because there was one thing that people were commenting on in relation to her as a mother. And it was the amount of I guess, emphasis that she was putting on the next kid being hers only and no one else can take it away. So I did see some comments. I wouldn't say it was excessive, but there were some comments where people were like, eh, maybe you shouldn't put so much emphasis on that, on like, this kid is like 100% yours because the other one can get taken away. Like you're kind of maybe like maybe Ocean's going to like grow up and watch this back and it might make her feel a certain type of way or like the new kid is more special or whatever. So there was that. People were like, oh God, can you stop talking about that? There was also people saying like she shouldn't be 
shit talking Rand the way that she is about how he's ugly and like just like stuff like that because they share a kid. So there were some comments about so I guess those are comments about her as a mother. So maybe that's what she's talking about. It could be. If she's talking about the other thing, like weaponizing motherhood, she has absolutely no point. If she's talking about the the last thing I said about, you know, like, oh, well, that might make Ocean feel some type of way or whatever. I mean, yeah, I guess like I can see how she'd be hurt by that. But here's the thing. And she has the right to her feelings. You can't tell people how to feel. She's allowed to be hurt by people commenting that and she might disagree with it and not think she said anything that was wrong or out of pocket or whatever. But the thing that where she says her as a mother is off limits. Sorry. Unfortunately, it's not. It Should it be? Maybe yes. Because it's really because mothers get a lot of judgment. Mothers are unfairly scrutinized way more than fathers, you know, Mothers have so much pressure on them to be like perfect in every way. I agree with all of that. However, if you put your parenting on a reality show, you are going to get criticism. You can't say it's not fair game. Is it fair game? Like, should people criticize your child? No, that is to me should be off limits. But as we've seen, there are crazy, pathetic people out there that will criticize children. There just are. And they're never going to go away, unfortunately. Unfortunately, this is one of the downsides of being a public figure and being on reality TV. And I'm sorry, but like if you're on a show and you're showing your mothering, you are going to get comments about it because people love to pick on mothers. They love to criticize parenting and mothering. It's, it's, it's often the people who don't even have kids who like doing it. Like it's, it's going to happen. I'm sorry. It sucks, but it's going to happen. Sheena's getting it. Oh, she goes out too much or shit like that. Unfortunately, like I'm not saying it shouldn't be a storyline. No. And the producer shouldn't be doing that. And it shouldn't be a focus. But, you know, it, it is the more, you know, she talks about her ex and talks about like mothering. And so people are going to pick at it. They just are. And again, she has the right to be upset about it. But I I like her kind of like demanding that it's off limits. Sorry. It's just, it's not going to happen. Because those people will never go away. Okay, so she also said that her reality and the reality of the show just couldn't like coexist this year. I guess usually like she just felt like she had to separate herself. Yeah, that's because the reality of the show, you were getting a ton of criticism and and it was probably upsetting you and I mean I don't like blame somebody for separating themselves from that especially when you're pregnant I think that's fine she said her feelings are not facts yes we know Lala um, but that this show is based on perspective and we won't always agree and that's what makes the show good for 11 years yeah I mean that's part of it um, but again I think I think Lala's used to like being disagreed with a little bit or like a regular amount. I think this year, the reason that being disagreed with is upsetting her so much is because she is also jealous. And she knows that it was her active choice the way she played the season and that she completely made the wrong choice. And she has no one to blame by herself, but herself. So I think that's what that's why she's spiraling a bit. Um, You know, she said she loves being on the show. It's given her a life she would only dream about when she was a little girl back in Utah. She's able to provide a beautiful life to her kids because of the audience and the fans. And she's so grateful. So here we go with the like backtracking. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we were all rabid dogs with rabies. And she didn't give a shit what any of us thought. And our opinions don't matter. And she doesn't live her life based on our points of view. And now it's like, now she's saying basically the opposite. Like, oh my God, because of you guys and the fans and the show, I have a beautiful life and please don't take it from me. And I will apologize so that it doesn't get fucked up, right? She says she apologizes if she said anything on this podcast that would make her sound ungrateful to her fans and the audience and that it was coming from a place of being hurt. She thanks the audience for giving her a life she's always dreamed of 
even though we didn't see eye to eye, she hopes that we enjoyed season 11. Um, I mean, we did and we didn't. Like, I did in the sense that I'm glad it brought out, like, I feel like when you have strong emotional reactions, that usually means it was a good season. Because if it really is a bad season, it's like you just don't even give a shit. Um, but at the end of the day, I think overall, you know, we were all very invested. So there's that. It, was it the best season? No. <laughs> but, you know, you can't win them all. On Monday, she's coming back to social media and she's nervous, she said. But she will address some questions from people about things that maybe don't make sense to us. So I guess she's going to actually answer some fan questions. I'm sure they'll be very carefully selected ones. So there's that. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's it. I don't know if she should address the fan questions unless she's going to do it in a way that will. I get, OK, she's probably going to do that. She's going to do it in a way that's apologetic or that shows, you know, some sort of remorse or her walking things back so that she's can, you know, have a fresh start season 12 without being like a complete mess. That's what I think she's going to go for here. It's like it's like she's been in a battle or a war with everybody all this time. And now it's like she's admitted defeat finally because she thought she might still have a chance to win with the third part of the reunion. And she didn't. She lost miserably. And that's it. So I don't know what else to say. You lost. It sucks. But got to move on eventually. Okay. Now, Ariana was also on the Disrespectfully podcast, and she said that even if she watched the whole season, um, she would have reacted the same way. So they didn't talk about Vanderpump Rules of the Reunion for that long of the podcast episode. I did listen to it. But basically, she said she would have reacted the same. She saw plenty of clips online, and she just didn't have that strong of feelings about certain things because... You know, she said that she's at a point in her life where she's changed a lot. And she says that she's just at a point where what people say about her and her life, it just doesn't really affect her, If especially if it's by people who are not, like, deeply ingrained in her life. She said, you know, we saw her react to the things that she does feel deeply about at the reunion, and she did get upset about things. But she said, you know, she's not going to sit there and correct, like, every single tiny lie or whatever, because it just doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, which is a very mature way to look at all this. Um, Katie says that she wasn't going to sit there and do the same thing, scream and yell while other people try to bring things up from like earlier in the year that had nothing to do with, you know, the season and that they were only being brought up to make her look like a bad person, which I mean, both of them are clearly talking about Lala. Um, I mean, I guess and others too, but definitely about Lala. Katie says that she thought it was mean for them to show the last five minutes of the reunion specifically to Ariana. Like it was just like they were doing that to her because everybody else knew what it was because they were all like around, right? Um, and Ariana says like, yeah, it felt like a pointed thing like a pointed attack like they were trying to get her to break down like they didn't get their moment with her and Sandoval on the finale and now they had her in this room she's contractually obligated to be there and this is their chance to I don't know break her down and she said okay I cried like are you happy now basically and Ariana so it is that like honestly it's we basically have admission from Katie and Ariana that it was the it's these misogynist Sandoval sympathizing producers who are here to try and, you know, break this woman down, give Sandoval his like Miami scene, which we saw him still try to have at the reunion. And he kind of had it where he's crying and he's like, you know, I'm not whatever. Like we had that. They got what they wanted and they did it in the most like unethical way. Right. They withhold the last five minutes of the show, 10 minutes, whatever, from her and then make her watch it on the spot. So she has no choice but to react. Right. Like, it's just so clear that they were trying to fuck her over this season. And it was just so clear that. Like they were just forcing things, it's just really fucked up. But Ariana says the ending of the show was authentic. And as far as like a reality TV ending goes, 
it was a good ending. Like her walking away was more, you know, compelling TV than anything else would have been. Katie also said like she doesn't do fake fights. She's never done that on all her years on the show. Like bring up something from six months ago that she's not even mad about just because be it'll be like, oh, this will make a good reality TV bite fight. Sorry. She says she doesn't do that. She's like, you know, too bad we weren't filming back then. Sorry. Which, thank you. Like, thank you. That is why this show has been so good. Right? Like, this cast is well-trained. They know what they're doing. They know how to make a good show. They just do. Okay? And they always have. And they've had something, you know, I even remember Lala saying in an interview once that their seasons that are flops they're not as good seasons were because there just literally actually wasn't a lot going on. And the seasons that were good were because there was authentically good stuff happening. Like this has never been the kind of cast that's like tried to force things too much. And because of the pressure from last season, they were trying to force things specifically Lala again. And look how it turned out. Just a gong show. <laughs> okay. So. Let's talk about The Secrets Revealed, because there was a few interesting things in there. Um, all right, where was I? Okay. So, first of all, they have the Toms introduce The Secrets Revealed, and they try to do this funny little intro. They are clearly still trying to make them happen. I mean, this was like before this reunion aired and filmed and all that, but it's so clear the producers want the Toms to be a thing again. It's very annoying. Katie and James are together, which is actually kind of fun because um, we don't usually see that. And then Sheena and Lala are together. So they do these little like duo confessionals. And then there's no Ariana because um, she's probably off doing something more important. And then the first thing they do is or one of the first things they show is Tom talking to Anne about splitting bills with Ariana. So, you know, Anne says like she's been having to make sure like everything's even and they used to just spend off the same credit card. They don't do that. And then they start talking about like splitting bills and get into the house. And Tom gets all like squirrely and he's like asked production. He's like, is Ariana in the house? And he gets all paranoid. He's like, well, I don't want her to hear what we're talking about. Do you guys know if she's here? And, and they're like, if she comes, we'll let you know. And then he basically tells Anne that he emailed Ariana and said, I will give you $600,000 cash. Based on the math, this is a buyout that is equivalent to us selling the house for $3.1 million, which is above Zillow and market value. Huh? I mean, I guess it depends on how much they owe on the house and all that. Other, I guess there's a, you know, other, we'd have to know all the other numbers. That seems very low. And again, I'm going to go with Ariana in terms of believing that he gave a reasonable offer, which she said he didn't. So I'm going to have to go with that. So does this shut up all those people out there that were like, he gave her an offer, 600000 Seriously? That's the offer? <laughs> and then he says to Anne, um, he goes with refinancing this house and taking her name off of it, Ariana's name. It would go from 10K a month payment to 20,000 plus a month. And she's like, can you afford that? And he's like, uh, for about like six to eight months. Okay, and then what? <laughs> like, he's so like, just sell the fucking house. Interest rates are through the roof. This is just not a good time for you to be trying to carry this type of mortgage on your own and refinance it. You did this. End of story. Okay. So I just love that they left this out. They should have shown this right away. This was clearly filmed early. This was one of the earlier things filmed. And again, clearly they were trying to paint Ariana in a certain way by leaving this out. Like, I think if people had heard right away that he had offered 600000 we would have had a different story. So LVP goes to James's house for dinner. Um, James is hilarious in this scene. He's like talking about how he's like buys only the most expensive ingredients for his queen and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> it, 
was a funny scene. Like there were some fun scenes in this Secrets Revealed that they just left out and just gave us like this miserable, depressing season. Then they have like the plane flies over, you know, the whole thing. He tells LVP about how he went to talk to Sandoval and basically he's pissed um, because, you know, Sandoval brought up stuff from 10 years ago and Lisa's like, well, he's so wrapped up in his own shit, you know, and that he's not seeing clearly. And at some point we have to give him empathy. And James is like, I went over there. I was willing to listen, but he fucked it up. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not that he's like, I like how LVP is trying to make it about like an in the moment thing. No, this is who he is. Okay. Then she says, like, look how much James has grown and he's got everything he wants. And then look at Sandoval. And James is like, I know, I know, you know, so there's that. Um, But it was a cute scene. Like, I wish it had made it on the original show. All right. Then they talk about Joe and Schwartz. They show Joe going over to Schwartz's apartment. Listen, you can tell he's sending her all the wrong messages. Like, it's so obvious. And again, Joe sucks. And I don't feel bad for her, but I'm just saying Schwartz was it was fuckboy behavior fully. So Schwartz says that in his confessional, he says that in trying to be nice and handle it well with Joe, he sent the wrong message and actually made it worse. Such a lame like I just didn't know any better like these again. Tom Schwartz is always trying to play it like he's this little innocent, you know, he's this little innocent boy and he just doesn't know anything. Oh, I was just trying to be nice and I made it worse. Like, no, you knew what you were doing. You were leading her on. You wanted to keep hooking up with her, but you didn't want to commit. And that's it. And that's what you did. So then they ask Katie about it. She says, I've been a real dumb bitch in my life. She's like as recent as like this weekend. So she should set this one out. (laughs) And Joe and Schwartz, you know, they have Olive Garden takeout and they're just very flirty. Schwartz tells her she's smoking hot. She's a 10 out of 10. He loves hanging out with her, but he just doesn't want to be in a relationship. Okay, so Joe says in and again, if Joe wants a relationship, it is also on her to say, okay, then I'm out. But like many women like Joe. She like a lot of people do this, they think they can change the person's mind or that something they'll wait around and something's going to change, right? She even makes a joke about how he's going to marry her in 10 years. But you can tell that's rooted in her belief that they'll end up together. Joe says in her confessional, you know, that stuff with Katie, as in Schwartz's relationship with Katie, was forced. And she's never going to make him do something that he doesn't want to do. So, you know, it's going to work out with her and Tom because she's not an evil witch like Katie was who held a gun to his head and forced him down the aisle. Um, So again, you know, Joe sucks. She says, you know, she's going to let him have fun and then he'll regret losing her. Yeah, looks like he's regretting it as he hooks up with his 21-year-old girlfriend. Okay, then we have Sheena and Ariana. They go, you know, to this like stretch place where they get stretched. I don't know. I guess it's like physical therapy, kind of, but not. Um, They talk about dancing with the stars and, you know, it comes up and then they go to Sheena's confessional and Sheena says, she's like, you know, I'm used to this, like, you know, not getting chosen, I guess. She's like, I'm used to this coming in second, third or fourth in this group. She's like, then I just remind myself, um, you know, it's not personal. Let her live her life. And it is what it is. Why do you need to be reminded that it's not personal? Like, why are you like, why is Sheena taking this Dancing with the Stars thing? Like, like she was about to get offered it. And, you know, Ariana hacked into her email and deleted them and was like, no, guys, you should hire me. Like, it's it's just crazy. And I still do not for one second believe anything from um, what's it called? Sorry, from Sheena about trying to say that, like, Oh, it was just because Ariana didn't tell her. No, you're pissed because she got chosen and you didn't and you're jealous. That's it. And this is another moment in another confessional of her proving that. Ariana also says in this scene uh, that she thinks Schwartz is leading Joe on. She's like, she's taking, he's taking her on swan dates. He took her to meet his family. So yeah. Um, okay. Then they have Sandoval and Schwartz looking at a house. And basically, Schwartz acknowledges that in the confessional that the internet thinks it's a terrible idea. Yeah, we do. 
Maybe somebody should listen sometimes. Just saying. Schwartz acknowledges this, and the house they looked at would be a 15K a month mortgage. Like, oh my God. <laughs> and Schwartz's face is like, fuck my life, basically. So I don't think these two are going to end up living together. If they do, I mean, God help them. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, there wasn't really anything significant from the after show. It was just mostly talk about like, has Jax changed? No. He's a good dad. Has Kristen changed? No, she's still an agent of chaos. Like it really was just that, if I'm going to be honest with you. So that's why I wanted to go over the, um, the secrets revealed. So I hope that that will tide us all over for the last episode. So that's it. Thank you so much, everyone. Vanderpump Rules is done for the season. It'll be back and I'll be back. But I'm still here. Okay? I'm still here and I am covering, you know, Vanderpump Rules and other news every week. Right now I'm releasing them on Mondays, the Bravo Weekly News. And I'm going to keep with that because it's working for me. I know I went to Fridays. Now I'm back on Mondays. So <laughs> it's just I'm trying to figure out what works best in my life. It's kind of a trial and error process. And if you're looking for summer house stuff, you can join the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash bravo and Botox. I'm covering the Vanderpump Rules after show. Oh, did I just say Vanderpump Rules? Summer house after show. I am thinking that I will cover the summer house reunion on here as like an extra bonus episode if I can. But I got to warn you right now, I'm kind of a Lindsay apologist. So if you don't like that, you might want to skip these episodes. And please don't just send me a bad review if you don't like that. Please, you can DM me and argue. I'm good with that. <laughs> just please don't leave a bad review. Okay. It's okay. We're allowed to have different opinions. All right. Well, let us say goodbye for now. It has been a great season to, you know, engage with you all. And I'm so glad that these after show recaps took off so much. I'm so glad everyone likes them. If more juicy Vanderpump Rules stuff comes out and craziness, you know, I there's always bonus episodes ahead. And I have a lot of good stuff planned for this summer. Now that Vanderpump Rules is done, I'm going to finally finish my Richard Sisters deep dives. Um, I've also got a couple uh, interesting books that are housewife related that I'm going to be getting into and doing kind of reviews and recaps of too. So, you know, keep on trucking. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. And you are now in the know for everything Vanderpump Rules. Bye. Thanks for listening, everyone. Your support really means everything to me. And this show wouldn't be possible without you, the listeners. So please, if you enjoy the podcast, leave a five-star rating and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. For more, you can join my Patreon, patreon.com slash bravo and Botox. And for $5 a month, you'll get four extra podcast episodes a month. You'll also get early releases of Bravo Paper episodes and more. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel at The Bravo Papers and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at Bravo and Botox and at the Bravo Papers. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can at buymeacoffee.com slash Bravo and Botox. You know, send your love through some much needed caffeine. And any guest that was on today's episode will be in the show notes, all their social media and contact information. So thank you so much, everyone. Keep overanalyzing Bravo.